Hey guys, welcome to today's video. We're gonna be doing a full face under five. I am testing out Believe Beauty. This is a Dollar General brand. So we're gonna really give our best attempts at doing a glamorous look. We are um, believing, believing, believe beauty in in this working out. I mean, we got the primer, the foundation, the blush, the bronzer, the mascara, the liner, the shadow, the whole thing. We are going to test it all. So let's just hop right in. I have everything set out. I feel organized-ish. I need to wet this. <sighs> I believe in myself. This that I am about to go and wet is a four-sided makeup sponge designed without latex. Better price than a beauty blender. Let's see how this goes. Be right back. Okay, success. No, stop that. I have been waiting all morning to film. It is actually now late-ish afternoon and it has been raining cats and dogs. I know I live in Seattle and it's like, duh, it's gonna rain there. Last night we almost lost power and the rain literally sounded like I was underwater in the ocean on some like crazy adventure, I kid you not. And now it's picking up again. All right, the first thing I'm going to put on my face is Believe Beauty Pretty and Primed Stay Put Makeup Primer. Now this is silicone free. You guys know I love that. Paraben free, not tested on animals. None of this stuff is. And it's a colorless silky primer. It's gonna extend the wear of our foundation. Let's go ahead. Oop, it's different than what I thought. It's more lotion-y than it is puffy. But let's go ahead and prime up the skin. Woohoo! Yes, we are putting on makeup and it's not five minutes into the video. Major success. Yes, subscribe, ring the bell if you haven't yet. I'm Tati. I normally do longer intros, but for once, we're getting it done right. You know what? That feels nice. It is silky, it dries down, not powdery, but it has kind of a slight tackiness that's not tacky, sticky. It's hard to describe. Okay, I like it, that's not bad. All right, moving into the foundation, the Silk Finish Foundation. It's medium to full coverage, glass bottle comes in a pump. This does look more like a high-end foundation. I'm impressed at just the bottle itself. I'm gonna mix a tiny bit of porcelain in with neutral tan just to tone it down a tiny smidgen little bit, not much, just because I have both of them on hand and we're just gonna go for it. I'm gonna go ahead and dot this on the face and then blend it out with the sponge. Okay, that's not giving me like the full coverage thing of my dreams. Let me see if I pick it up with the sponge. I'm just gonna stamp it on my problem area. This is actually reminding me quite a bit of the L'Oreal Infallible that you guys know I love so much. Oh, this is always dangerous when you're wearing a white shirt. Ah. The finish of this is super natural. This truly is a medium to full coverage. So don't, don't go thinking it's gonna get everything erased, but it is evening me out really nicely. If we see this side, to this side without looking very makeup-y. It does not feel like I have anything on the skin and almost feels tightened, which is interesting. All right, I'm gonna finish up the other side of the face. I prefer applying it directly with this sponge, not with my fingers how I did it at first. I think you can get more coverage that way. And the size of the sponge is like, it's huge once you dampen this thing. So it's not exaggerating any dryness on my forehead, which some of the time with the more full coverage foundations that can happen and is a problem, especially if your skin is temperamental like mine. If I'm not on my A game of masking and exfoliating, my forehead is like the first to go. It's not canceling all of this, which I wish for a, maybe a little more, but that's kind of a me issue, not a product issue. I'm confused. I'm like, was this really $5? Stop it. Five bucks, five dollars. And you guys, this shade range is good. There's a lot to choose from. We're literally taking a peek into the world of Dollar General 
which is not the most glamorous spot to be purchasing makeup where you wouldn't think there would be like this huge array of so many shades. Like they, they have it going on the right way. They have a concealer. I don't have the concealer, so I will be using my Catrice today. I'll link the video below of me testing it and doing a full day wear look close up, seven bucks. Very good, spoiler alert. I will say it is a bit of a bummer that you can't order more online. You can order some of their stuff online, but a lot of this you do have to go into the store and hunt down. I wanna throw this out there. If only I had way back when, when I did a lot of my exclusive shopping at the 99, if you're from Los Angeles, you know the 99 is where it's at. I literally got my like, dishwashing detergent, my shampoo, a lot of my makeup, expired candy, um, food. The 99 was like my place to shop when I was living on my own when I was 18 and broke as a joke. So it's nice that they have these options out there because it's not always available in your budget to spend $50 on a foundation or even $15 on a foundation, you know? The sponge is doing a pretty good job. It's almost too big big, but also it's getting it done quickly. To keep with the drugstore theme and I don't have a powder, I have everything else. I'm gonna use a little CoverGirl underneath the eye. The foundation does not seem to be oxidizing much. I like it more now that I've given it like a few moments to kind of sink into the skin. I really got, I gotta whap these, these suckers off. Have you guys heard of micro needling RF? It looks so painful, but I've been doing my research of what kind of treatment I want to do on my skin. And I think I'll take you guys with me or I'll vlog it or try to do something like that. There is a dermatologist I saw on TikTok that was like, this is the best treatment. It gives amazing results. And his skin was so nice. And I'm like, this is it. But he literally made this video and it was the voiceover video where he's like, I'm firing my staff after this. This is the most pain I've ever been in. Has anyone done it? Is it truly that painful? Is it worth it? All right, I'm gonna go into bronzer and blush. I have the shade Sunkissed Honey, the Sunstruck Marbleized Bronzer. I also have Risky Business, and this is a duo. You get half of it shimmery, half of it matte. Okay, this does not mix in with the budget, but this is my new favorite brush for the face, even though it's not intended for the face. It's literally a body brush. It's number 69 body brush from Scott Barnes. It's the size of my forehead, okay? But this guy right here, when you swirl in here, and I am gonna take it on the neck, get this brush coated. And I'm telling you, well, I'm hoping, I've never used this bronzer before, but it distributes bronzer so quickly and it diffuses it in a way that I am like obsessed with. A rule of mine is to always break the rules when it comes to brushes and what they're intended to be used for. Our faces are all different. Just be your own artist with it. Figure it out for how you like to do your makeup. I just like how quick that is and how it distributes product just everywhere, but lightly. This is a very light bronzer, like a kiss of color, a little bit of illumination in here. So I typically would use something like this alongside a matte bronzer as well. So this might not be my fave to use just on its own period. Now we are going to go into our blush. I'm gonna start out with the matte side first. Do my trick that's really the most basic but effective trick of stamping it out on a paper towel in front of me first, making sure we're evenly coated, and then going in like so. Lately, I am trying to bring my blush up a little bit higher to hopefully bring my face up higher as well. I'm trying to get in the habit of smiling, but also kind of keeping the blush a little bit high. I just wanna put a little bit of the shimmery right there, right there. This is nice. Look at how pigmented that is. Stop that right now. That is a nice blush. They do have cream blush. I want the cream blush because you guys know I'm all about cream blushes. Um, I will be tracking that down in the future. This is the On Cloud Nine Luminizing Glow Trio. Which one do we wanna use? Or do we wanna use them all? Let's go in first with the middle. I'm gonna take a fan brush and just kind of, yo, how is this makeup so affordable? Are we for real right now? I'm so over spending so much money on expensive makeup that does not even work that good. 
Lately, that's been my issue. I need to do another fails video. Truth be told, I feel kind of bad when I do those videos because the makeup industry as a whole has kind of suffered over the past year. I personally, I fully understand. So I don't like just kind of kicking anything while it's down and I feel like we're trying to build back up but there still are products that just do not work. I have recently spent a lot of money on stuff that I'm like, uh, like what, like why is this $50? Like why did that not work? So let me know in the comments, thumbs this up if you wanna see a luxury rundown of newer products that are expensive specifically that just did not, did not do it. I got a lot. I know I just did a fails video like, I think like a month ago, but I have more because I'm back to testing. Something happened where like a lot of brands are just not, they're not doing it like they used to. And I'm saying that while I'm trying out $5 makeup and it's actually good. And I'll mix these together and kind of go on the nose. We're not doing any contouring today. So there's no structure to the face. We're just gonna glow. Do a little of this, a little bit of that. We look healthier all of a sudden. Oh, I forgot to use, they have an angled blush brush. Hello, why did I not use this? I'll use this in the future. They do have brushes. This is the only one that I have, but they literally range from $3 to $4, I think, for brushes. Great price, hard to do at that price point. So we have two eyeshadow palettes right here. I have Midnight Express and Sultry Sunset. They do have more than just these two. Polar opposites that I have, what should we do? What should we do? I really wanna do this. Yeah, why not? It's like pumpkin spice. It'll it'll be like fall themed. I have the brow defining pencil in dark brown. That's too dark for me. Okay, light brown. Oh, light brown looks like it will be much better for me. This has a really nice spoolie and this is not my fave type of pencil. You guys are already well aware of that. I like a thinner kind of micro pencil, but we're just going to give it a try and see what happens. And she's back to using the ugliest mirror of all time, but it's like magnified. So we're we're getting serious about the brows. We're going for it. That is a dramatic brow for me anyway. This is not bad though. It's actually better than the Maybelline one I recently tried. I'm torn. I always make the weirdest eyebrow faces. I'm undecided. I have a brow gel to set this business when we're done with eyeshadow. I always like doing that just in case I powder anything or I need to move anything around. Tip from me to you, I always save using a brow gel until the very, very end, but this is not bad. All right, I'm gonna scoot you guys closer and we are going to get to lips and eyes. I have already lined my lips with Totally Toffee, my most loved lip liner right now at the moment. And I don't have a lip liner from Believe, but they do have lip liner. It's just a matter of tracking these things down. Okay, so I am going to use the Believe Beauty lip gloss in tea time. Oh, that's not a gloss. That is a liquid lip. Okay, we're not gonna be using that, but wow, that is, well, should we? Shoot, my lips are so dry right now, I don't know if I can hang with that. It would go perfectly with this. Do I do it? I kinda just wanted to do a gloss. All right, we're gonna go in with the Lustrous Shine Lip Gloss in Prim and Proper. I've been trying out so many lip products, so I could use a thick gloss like this, that is for sure. That is an actual test. Wow. Sometimes when you put a gloss on chapped lips, it only makes it worse and somehow makes it stand out all the more. And this is not doing it. I might need more of these. This comes in nine shades and it is four bucks. It feels kind of like a MAC lip gloss as far as that texture. So if you like a gloss that is a little bit thicker, a little bit stickier, but it's definitely not doing the separation thing and it has that high wet shine that just like sinks in to your lines on your lips and kind of makes everything look a little more pouty and full. This is my favorite kind of a gloss. Georgia Peach, this is also a lustrous shine lip gloss. I wasn't gonna show this, but because I'm liking this gloss so much, I just wanna do a swatch and show you guys. Ooh, <gasps> I like it. And I'm excited now to try the liquid lip. Nice, okay. We're gonna swatch both of these quads. This first one we have is Sultry Sunset. So let's take a look at the swatches. We have a gorgeous red, red metallic. We have a beautiful matte orange 
a golden shade that's a little more golden bronzy. And then we have a nice kind of camely matte color. The mattes are not that rough matte. They have a little bit of movement to them. And we have a nice peachy tone and a deep espresso brown that is really smooth. This is a nice fall palette. I think I wanna play with those colors. We might mix a little of this, a little of that together, use both palettes, but let's take a look at the swatches from this one. These are smooth. Okay, so we have that bright, creamy, milky white. We have a beautiful teal. You have a gorgeous metallic that is a little more loose than the other metallics in the other palette, but really nice. A very rich black. It looks a little bit crumbly. The pigmentation in here is intense. And then you have this corresponding metallic to that teal. Maybe not my fave. It swatches differently than I expected, a little darker than I expected. Next to it, you have a nice taupe. I think I like the first palette better, but this could definitely be useful if you are smoking out an eye, using it as liner, and then that cream. So two of these in this particular palette could be very easily everyday use. Before I even get into the shadow, I do wanna use their eyeshadow base. It's a universal eyeshadow base. I don't think it, oh no, it does have some color to it, okay. This is more reminiscent of an Urban Decay primer versus like a, a painterly paint pot. I'm gonna start out with a fluffier brush. I'm gonna go into this cream shade right here, tap off the excess, and what I wanna do is focus on brightening up this inner portion of my lid and a little bit into the crease. Okay, now I'm gonna take a Scott Barnes 6-2 brush. It just has a nice medium thickness with a point at the tip. And I'm gonna go into the kind of more saddle tone in the oranger palette. And I'm not gonna pull this fully through the crease. I'm gonna focus the majority of the darker colors on the outer edge of the eye. That packs a punch, okay. Sheesh, you gotta be careful with this stuff. I was not expecting that. Uh, this is a lot darker and more dramatic than I had anticipated. I really thought this was gonna be the kind of neutral outer edge, kind of like lightly set the base, but this is doing most of the work like already. I'm gonna take my fingertip into this pumpkin-y, pretty orange shade right here and just work it on the outer edge. Wow, oh my. All right, well, if you are looking for something on a budget that is like, bam, this is definitely an option. I'm gonna go into this espresso shade right here with a more densely packed brush. This is a Precision Firm Blender from Sigma. I'm gonna go on the outer corner. I'm gonna pull this down almost in a V. This is so more intense than I imagined. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I went a little crazy with that brown. It almost over blended a little bit. I wish I had not done that, but this gives us an opportunity to take this golden shade right here. And I am gonna put that on kind of the center of the eye a little bit. For how pigmented this is, it's not splattering on the face, so it is staying on the eyelid. It's not fluffing everywhere, which is interesting. I'm gonna go back into the first palette and re-brighten this area here. I am gonna try this eyeliner out. It says it's metallic. It is a liquid eyeliner. Dark Champagne is the shade. It does not dry down too shiny, so we're just gonna kinda test it out, see how it goes. I think I found the thing I don't like so far. Might be because it's a metallic eyeliner and not like a full-fledged, like intense color eyeliner. I have a setting spray that I'm gonna go ahead and mist the face aggressively with. Ooh, that is a nice spray. Ooh. Very light floral scent. 
Do we see this spray? That is a good mister. It does not smell cheap either, and it's not overpowering. This is a replenishing makeup setting spray that hydrates, preps, and sets skin for flawless makeup application. Okay, you can use this before or after, so it's like a before or after, anytime you feel like it kind of a spray. What I'm gonna do, I'm doing this specifically before I put on mascara so it doesn't smear everywhere. You guys know the drill. I love using a Dyson or any kind of heat, a fan, something that has like a little bit of heat though to dry down a setting mist. So three, two, one, let's do this. That added a glow to my skin, like legit a nice dewy MAC Fix Plus level glow. I like that. Just pat some of the excess down. Not loving that liner. Okay, you know what I'm gonna do though? I wanna take the highlighter. I'm gonna take the bronzy one and do a little of this to brighten things up more. Then we're gonna take the black from this palette and we're gonna line the eyes with that. Ooh, okay, that leveled things right up. I am gonna set the brow with the eyebrow styling gel. I have clear, but I kinda wanna use the colored one just to see how it is. This is dark brown. Not bad, I like it. Let's go in with mascara. I'm gonna be using the Extended Lash Lengthening Mascara. And I have already curled my lashes. I'm gonna go right on in. Ooh, this is a very rubberized firm wand. Whoa, that is crazy on the bottom lashes. This is very lengthening. Hello, I like this makeup. All right, so here's the deal, you guys. I'm surprised I like this as much as I do. There were a few little bumps along the way, but what I wanna do now, which I wasn't gonna do, but it's the perfect day because I'm just at home. I have a couple of errands to run. It is rainy outside, so we'll put it to like weather test with specifically this mascara because I'm very, very curious how this holds up. The lower lash is like the perfect mascara for the lower lash if it does not budge. I'm gonna do a wear test. So I will see you guys several hours from now. All right, you guys, it is 10.37 at night and I am shocked. Like what? I am shocked to the core that my blush is still very blushy. The eyeshadow is still on with no creasing. The liner, we had a situation. We understand what happened. It was metallic. We tried to take shadow, remedy the situation. It got remedied, but then it is faded a little bit. Even the highlight is a little bit still there. I thought while I was doing this last moment of the day before I wash my face, it's all gonna come off anyway. Let's just play with the uh, liquid lip, why not? Okay, no lip liner and so-so. Okay, right when I'm like, everything is so, so good. I do like the gloss more than I like how this liquid lip is going on. Not that it's bad, it's just not like, you know, super duper, ooh, ah, wow, you do need a lip liner with that, and I did not put one on. So let's do a quick rundown. The primer, I love the texture of it. I love whatever it did to prep my skin for the foundation. I will be using this foundation again. What I really like about this foundation is it's wear time, and that every time I looked in a mirror, regardless of the light, I was like, oh, this skin's looking very natural, very good, very healthy, not greasy, not overly mattified, just nice. 
And I think this is a great medium coverage foundation. So I am wowed, wow, wowed by this for $5. Are you kidding me? The brows, so, so not my jam. Don't like pencils like that. The setting gel I did like on the brows. I will be reaching for that again. It just gave a little bit of, you know, kind of placement and fluffiness, featheriness that I do enjoy. Um, the blush, super pigmented and is still on at the end of the day. Are you kidding me? That almost never happens. So that gets a huge thumbs up from me. The bronzer is a little bit too shimmery for my personal liking. I like a more mattified bronzer. We already went on about that. The shadow I love. It is super pigmented. I would go in with maybe a lighter hand next time. The liner, eh. And the mascara is still very mascara-ish. Is it my absolute favorite ever? No, I have other drugstore favorites that I like from Essence. Collab Beauty is a smash hit. Really into Wet n Wild right now. But I will try it again because I do have to say I love how it made the lower lash look. Just very extremely lengthened. Everything said and done, I'm pretty amazed at the price point and the performance. Let's not forget the makeup mister. The scent, subtle. The spray, luxury. Took me a hot minute to try it all out, so I'm so glad that I did. I hope that you found this video helpful. If you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below what were your favorite items. Have you tried this line? Let me know what you think. And before you leave, make sure you are subscribed, ring the bell, turn on your notifications. You know the drill. I hope you're having a good one, whatever you're doing. I love you. I will see you all in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Mwah.